Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we call for a taxi to take us to the studio, but we forgot to charge our cell phones. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host and fellow detective, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great. We're talking about Famicom Detective Club, Emmy of the Smiling Man. I'm excited about this. I am, I am too, and it's good. We should say that up front, because um, the cold open doesn't really indicate it. No, At like all. those those who know know, <laughs> but I, I kind of wanted to just like right away be like, this is our episode about Emmy of the Smiling Man, yeah. Famicom Detective Club, um, and uh, we we will get to. I, I'm sorry, I cut you off in the middle of a. No, it's okay. One of your like uh, beginning of the episode prompt me with a question that's not about like what's going on <laughs> uh-huh. in Nintendo. I, we're just excited to talk about Emmy. We, we're just excited to talk about Emmy. So let's get through the business at the top yeah, here. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, and, and, and then dig into it. Um, if uh, you would like to go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Cartridge Society society uh you can uh, support us at the 8-bit or 16-bit levels where uh, if you're doing that you get access to our once a month episodes of miniseries that we're putting out uh we are currently in season two of ncs arcade where mark and i are playing uh nin- classic nintendo games that uh, we've never played before yeah so uh for september we are playing castlevania dawn of sorrow originally released for the nintendo ds and um we'll probably be talking about that because in the beginning of October, but it still counts as but your it's September, still the September, September <laughs> game. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. Thank you. Um, and then there will be another one for October. Yes. Right. 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 Um, so uh, uh, play along with that if you're interested. Um, and uh, everyone uh, who follows us for uh, free or at any level on Patreon also gets uh, access to our listener feedback episodes. So if you have any thoughts about Dawn of Sorrow, you can email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com, and we will include your thoughts in that episode. So uh, whether you are uh, supporting us with money or not, you can send us those emails and listen to that episode when it comes out. Uh, get into our Discord if you're not already there. Email us, uh, and we will send you an invitation. Mark, this is maybe the fastest we've ever gotten through the business at the top of the show, but I think it's good. I think so, too. Because yes, just more time to talk about that smiling man. Oh, he's smiling. Okay, let's get into it. I did want to start, like, light. No, no real spoilers for for the story. Just kind of at at the beginning, because I think there's still a lot of. Um, I don't think a ton of people have played this game. Yeah, I think this was a niche release, and we yes. just happened to be in straight down the barrel yes. of like the target audience uh-huh. for this game. Right. Revealed with like a mysterious trailer that was like, is Nintendo doing a horror game? And you and I were both like, mm, I don't know about this. And then it was revealed to be a uh, Famicom Detectical game. We were like, wait a minute. Yes. This we, is we the had best like possible the, outcome we had, like, for us. We had the opposite yes. reaction to the majority of people. <laughs> I, yes. where most people were like, Famicom Detective Club, like... I'm just not that interested in that. Right. And, so, like, sort of understandable. Because, like, the Famicom Detective Club series, right? We got the remakes in 2022. One. One. 2021. Um, which are, like, cool games. And they are well-written. And, like, the environment and atmosphere in them is absolutely killer. Um, and some of the story twists and uh, characters are just, like, phenomenal. But, like, they are undeniably creaky old games. Yes. I, and I don't really think I appreciated how antiquated they were until yes. playing this one. Right. So, I mean, like, the original uh, two games, uh, even in their remake version, uh, I don't recommend playing without a guide. Totally. Like, there, there are times when, like, you simply cannot progress without using a guide. And this is where, like, I will sing the praises of, I mean, I'll sing the praises of Emio kind of a lot. I really like this game. Um, but it is imminently playable. Um, It's not like a a, a game where you're going to be doing any real deducing or puzzle solving or anything like that. It is a visual novel where uh, the characters are detectives. You're not a detective, right? Like, just toss that idea out of your head because you're not going to be doing any detecting in this game. Yeah, it's really a... um, 
A conversation simulator. <laughs> yeah, yes. You know, like uh, the majority of the gameplay, such as it is, is that you go into a situation and you talk to people until you've talked to them enough to get the information to move the plot along. Yep. And then, and then the plot moves along, yes. <laughs> to the next situation where you're going to have another conversation with somebody. Right. Like, well, and it's funny even that you say you go to a place and have a conversation. The game just puts you there. Or sometimes you have to select travel and then you go there. Yep. But not all the time. Sometimes you just go. Yep. Yeah, it is, um, uh, it, it's, it is interesting that they made a third one of these. 100%, yes. And that they... They, I, I think they like very truly did sand off the like rough edges of, of the first two games, but not in a way that is immediately apparent from playing for like an hour. Yeah. Right? Like, totally. If you play the first hour of all three of these games, uh, it, it's going to feel roughly the same. It's only when you like get all the way through it and realize that you were never stuck. In Emio, like you would definitely be in the Forgotten Air or the Girl Who Stands Behind, um, and that like it is a relatively frictionless experience to play Emio the Smiling Man. Yeah. Um. So that I don't know. Maybe all we can say about gameplay. <laughs> there are moments, uh, it, while you are uh, playing um Emio, that you have to like review the casework that you've done during the day. It's at at the end of most chapters, right? Maybe all of them. Maybe all the chapters. Um, and it's, uh, you, your player character who, I mean, my, mine, I, uh, carried over my name from, uh, previous games. So it, it remembered that I was Patrick Ellers. Yeah. I remember that I was Ace Mitchell. I, so I guessed, uh, in our show notes that uh, your character's name was Ace Mitchell and I, I was right. <laughs> uh, so great. Um, so you, yes, sorry, your protagonist character and Ayumi, uh, Tachibana, who is like the other detective who is your age um, working the case with you, uh, where you sort of review the things that you learned and every now and then it will pop up with uh, a prompt for either you to select something from your notebook um, that you learned about uh, as like the answer to Ayumi's question, or sometimes you have to type it in, um, and, or sometimes it's like multiple choice, Yeah, right? Um, and that is like, you'll be graded on those things later in, in the Are game. Are you? Okay, you had mentioned that. And yes. I, I don't know... That I, I don't re- think that happened for me. So you have to open up the report card. It's like on the title screen. After you finish the game, you can get a report card oh. on your progress. Or not progress, but like how you did in each, yeah. in each chapter. Okay, okay, got it. Um, and then you also get like a little personality thing too. Because there are like choices you can make or like um, sometimes when you're interviewing people, uh, you are forced to like observe something about either them or the environment. And if like... The game will, uh, like, if you keep uh, checking out people's crotches or their chests or whatever, um, part of your report card at the end is like, oh, you're a little bit of a naughty, you know? Like, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. That's really funny. It's, it's, it's keeping track of how you play it, um, but it, it really has no bearing on how the story plays out. Yeah, and so there are, because there were, like, one or two times where I had something happen. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to go back and see, like, okay, well, what would have happened if I chose yes. this dialogue selection or did this instead? And there are differences. So I think there are, like, they're not even branching paths. They're just, like, within that scene. Yes. Different ways just for a different it to reaction. play out. Yeah. yeah. Different reactions. Different, like, combinations of events. Like, one time I looked at a clock and that prompted a conversation versus just continuing to talk to the person. Right. I got to the same place. But the different ways of doing it, but it's not like the story changes. Like the outcome is fixed. Yeah, so very fixed. Even the outcome of every scene, yeah. I think, is 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 very fixed. Uh, and there's no there's no honest fail states. There's I, I had one psych out fail state. I don't know if you got the same one. Okay. Uh you mentioned there are times where it pops up and you have to type something. Yes. yes. And you know, you're using the uh, the on screen keyboard to do it. And there was one time that I'm like, is this a glitch? Or was this intentionally trolling where you're supposed to enter a person's name that yes. you were able to glimpse like for one second beforehand? And, and, and it's a Japanese name and, you know, we're uh, white dudes who speak English. And so, like, it was tough for me to remember. Uh-huh. It was the one thing I had to look up because I was like, oh, I know I just saw it. But, like, yeah. But I don't recall it. I don't yeah, recall it. Th- yes. So that's where I failed because I typed it in. 
but I typed it in wrong. Yes. And so I got the fail state there. Yes. And you, then, you got the game over yeah, screen, uh-huh, which is incredible. Like yeah. yeah. I, we're doing a little a tiny spoilers here, but you know, whatever. It's a, it's a fun bit of the experience. Um, and then is there anything else that we want to set up like story wise that isn't really spoilery, but just sort of like uh, establishing the premise of it before like, because I think the majority of our conversation here has to be spoiler full because the twists and turns that the story takes um, is like really where the the meat of uh, my gameplay experience and what I liked about it. And I think what we're going to have to talk about here. Yeah, I, I guess what, what I would say is if you're wondering whether this game would be interesting to you. Yes. Um, the things I like about it is like that it's a mystery story. And I feel like the conclusion of it and how it all comes together was uh, fulfilling for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like um, it paid off. Uh, the And then the vibes, I think, are great. I think it yes. looks really good. I think the music is good. Um, I thought the writing was, like, touching and funny. Yes. And... Um, and, you know, like, I thought the setting was interesting, too. You know, it's, like, late 80s Japan. Right. And so, like, that's really, like, if those things interest you, yeah. Well, and I, I think mean, it's worth picking up. I, I also think that there is, like, the element of the sort of, like, folk horror, um, you know, sort of, like, creepypasta kind of stuff. Like, if that's, that's not, like, the, the thrust of the game or really, like, the world that you live in for the most part, um, but, like, it does uh, brush up against it kind of regularly, right? Um, And the game is not a... It's not a horror game, right? Though there are, like, scary moments or, like, tense moments. Um, But, like, I like how much the game plays with, like, thematically live ammo, right? Like, there's uh, sort of a... And I think even in, like, the the first um, two, two games, although maybe not, like, people die in them, but, like... Um, these deaths are grislier, right? Um, and these sort of like um, circumstances that the victims and the uh, suspects like find themselves in are a lot darker than they were in the the first two games. So like this doesn't have quite the same. The thing is, it it ha- does have a lot of cozy vibes, but it was not content to stay in cozy territory. Yeah, the like. Themes of it. I'm, I'm trying to dance know, around a lot like, of it. But yeah, but yeah, but you're right. The the themes of it, the things that happened in the past, yes, that are um the cause of all of like the events and everything. Like all of that is really dark. Yes, and there are parts in the game where it gets in, like incredibly dark. And it's another reason why it's like this is really interesting that this product exists. I agree. Like yes. um uh because for like a Nintendo product. It goes to places that you don't really like. Think Nintendo would go to the previous games were teen, right? Right. This game is rated M, and I would say it's like a like a well earned. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a well earned M that doesn't have any uh, swear words in it, or like nudity or anything like that, or it's even like... any real like. I guess there's some gore. There is one room that's covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> one time, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, there's not a. Uh, it, it is more thematically mature than it is anything else. This is the kind of game where, like, and even, like, our discussion of it, where I'm like, do we need to have trigger warnings uh, right. as we start to discuss? Um, uh, and, you know, when, when we uh, trip over into our spoiler section, I think maybe we should throw down a, a couple uh, uh, tr- trigger warnings. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, we absolutely can. Also, like, you know, the ESRB rating... And the reason why it was rated M, like, does not lie. Those things are all true. Oh, I actually... And they I, all, I, like, happen in the... They're all talked about, and, you know, like, you can... You witness them in the game. But to mm-hmm. your point, um, that it does kind of have, like, cozy vibes. And we talked about, about this a little bit maybe two weeks ago in... Or last week in the news episode talking about what we've been playing. Yeah. And I mentioned that I don't really like in detective stories where they cheat and they cut away from the point of view character yes. to show you something that like that character doesn't see and this game does that and the first time it happened i was like i I'm not, i don't, I don't yeah. like this i don't i don't like when stories do this but you brought up that the game kind of needs it because what you are doing as like the detective character and the conversations you're having like they are 95 percent of the time 
light and there's humor and mm-hmm. it's like all that kind of stuff. And so it's those And you moments. are in such cozy settings. Like you're in an old folks retirement home or That's you're like in a beautiful. cafe. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're in these like a bucolic, uh, you know, beautiful settings. Um, and that like you need to be reminded uh, and like I actually think that the the couple glimpses that we get usually um, uh, around Detective uh, Kuze, um are uh, important for like thematic and story reasons too. That like they're happening and pulling you away from the detective's experience. I think that's all like relevant and warranted and like serves the plot very well. But in, in ways I don't want to express in a non spoiler section. But yeah, it's uh, I uh, I am happy now that we can dive deeper into what those mean yeah yeah but yeah the experience of playing it especially um the if you like the true ending i guess i'll call it sure is really the darkest stuff yeah yes that's and right. the game warns you the <laughs> yeah. game is like you come back to this when you when want you're to. ready right yeah like if, if you felt rocked by like the proper or like the first ending of the game like take a beat uh hi <laughs> you're good and you know i, I don't know like where uh you were or like what time of day you could but like i finished the i, I ran credits uh, uh the the first time um at like 10 30 10 45 at night uh and like saw that there was more and was like okay i'm gonna uh, like i'm this deep like i'm gonna keep going it was like about midnight by the time i finished but like <laughs> it just got dark you uh-huh, know like yeah. it just like I, I was uh living in some like real ghost story some like i said before like creepy pasta slender man kind of stuff but it is, I think, impressive how well the game balances those two. Because yes, it, because it doesn't. Again, the ending's a little bit different. But the part where you're more like active, you're playing that like detective character, and yeah, you're solving the initial mystery. Um, I would say, or the mystery that kicks off the whole thing, right? Uh, that is the present day mystery. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty like um, that's tense too. Right. Yeah. the The ending is tense, but like yeah. the uh, for the most part, up into like the ending, it's a pretty frothy experience. Yeah, that's true. Like that's you know, true. like uh, and I think the way that they are able to balance those two and still make it feel of a piece is really impressive. Uh, yes, and is like part of what the game is saying as well. Like I think that's part of the 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 themes of the game is that like there is. Uh, like everyone puts on, and they'll just really like come out. You know, maybe this is more uh, spoiler sectiony, but like th- it's just me talking about themes here. That a lot of the themes of the game are like people put on this sort of like face of like everything is okay, even when it is not. Um, and that like maybe we need a little bit more of embracing and acknowledging the darkness of what's happening in people's personal lives um, in order to save them from darker fates than even what they're experiencing now. And that, like, it's one of the questions that the game poses at the end is, like, could this have been prevented if people had been more helpful, right? Right. Um, So, like, that dissonance between, like, the really dark stuff and getting milk tea at, you know, a cafe with your former, um, like, uh, fencing coach, it, you know, it, it, I, it's all, like, that tension is there on purpose uh, and works so well to the story's benefit. Yeah, and the way that structurally it's handled and, like, yes. how the game comes together at the end. It, I, I've, I thought it was pretty, a pretty incredible experience. Yeah. Um, should, should it, I mean, is now the time to, like, uh, uh, like I can play a little transition music. We can then go full spoilers. I think we've got to. We got to do it. Okay, so from here on out, uh, we are assuming that you've either played the entirety of Meo the Smiling Man, or you don't care uh, about uh, being spoiled yep. spoiled on it. Um, which isn't to say that we're like rushing right to the ending. Uh, but you know, now if it comes up, it it, it comes up. Mark, how would you like to structure this conversation? So let's, I think we should start with just kind of running down the basics. Yes. Um, and the basics of the, the mystery and the people that you're dealing with. Yeah. Right? Um, so uh, as always, you play as the, the detective, either Patrick Ellers or Ace Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I, Ayumi Tachibana, who you do play as, um, I, I think it's possible that like the sort of a pre-release fervor about it, like kind of overplayed. Um, I would say it's the most that uh, out of the three games sure. that like you play um, as as her, and there are. I mean, look, 
Does the game handle Ayumi all that well, generally speaking? I think there are a few, like... Yeah, it's it, it's a little tough because both your player character and uh, uh, Fukuyama, the uh, aforementioned um, uh, fencing coach, uh, are, like, kind of pervy and weird towards Ayumi. Yeah, crushing on Ayumi Crushing hard. on Ayumi. Um, and also, both of these guys totally incapable of talking to women, <laughs> seemingly. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Right? That's true. Um, but, th- I mean, that that is uh, another thing that I think is, like, part of the game is that uh, everyone is bad at expressing the thing that they most need to. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, is also one of the things that makes the game sort of like uh, difficult in that you're, you're driving conversation. And sometimes you just have to ask people the same question like nine times yeah. before they're like, oh, you know, here's this vital piece I of know. information. Yeah. And then the uh, um, other character in the, other the detective, detective agency right. is like, uh, is Utsugi. Right. And he's your ward. For, or no, 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 no. You're reverse. his ward, yes. You're his ward. Yeah. Um, and you're like 19. So Ayumi's is Ayumi. 19. Right. And Utsugi's like in his 40s. It's his detective agency. Right. You're both like junior detectives working there. And in the pre in the girl who stands behind, um, you're working at the detective agency, but he's like absent all the time, and it's not really explained why. But in this game, they he's still absent all the time. Right. Or like 90% of the time, but they do it, there's like a good reason for him to be gone, right? Which I liked. I liked. That I, I did like, too, and I like that. Uh, you then get to, it's not as much, but you do get to play as him. Yeah. So like, there are these three playable characters, um, and it's not like they have different abilities or you have any choice in anything. Um, but it is cool to just be like uh, behind one more set of eyes. Yeah. You know, uh, during all that. So those those are your detectives. Um, and then there is. Uh, the the crime that kicks everything off is a body is discovered. Um, uh, a, a middle school boy by the name of uh, Aisuki S- uh, Sakasi. And and I've I've got to say Sakat. yes. So the the um all the dialogue is spoken in yes. Japanese. Mm-hmm. Like that's the only option. And there was no question that I was incredibly bad at pronouncing Japanese names before. Yes. But after playing this game and like, I also would pronounce their first name like Isuki or something like that. Isuki. But in the game, it sounds to me like they're saying like, they're saying like SK or something like that. Sure. And I'm like, oh boy. Right. So, uh, so I guess brace yourself for a bunch of old boys here. Cause like, <laughs> I'm just going to say I'm the only way I can. Yeah, totally, know, totally, I, I think totally. we both, uh, both are. Um, but so, uh, this, uh, this child is discovered at a, a pump station. Mark, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. At is first it like I a it was water like a, thing? Yes. Like I think utility? it is. I yeah. think it is. Yeah. Like a utility thing. Um, so some sort of like, uh, you know, government building that is like an unmanned kind of situation. Uh, his body is discovered there um, and there are uh, strangle marks around his neck and he's wearing a uh, bag, a paper bag over his head. But with like a... he was strangled by like a cord or something like that. Right. Um, yes. But yeah, there's a ba- there's a paper bag over his head that has like a smiley face on it. Right. Uh, and so that's kind of what kicks it off um and uh so the the cops call utsugi uh because your you know your boss has a relationship with the police and so like he gets involved in uh you know trying to solve this mystery and ayumi is kind of quick to be like this uh has the hallmarks of this um uh urban legend right of the smiling man who uh, appears to uh, young girls when they're uh, crying uh, and tells them that, like, if uh, I'm going to get you to smile or I'm going to give you a permanent smile. Uh, and the permanent smile is uh, killing them and popping a bag on their head that has this smiley face on it. Right. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, a little, little bit out of order here, but this is when Utsugi is like, okay, I'm going to go, like, investigate these sort of, like, origins of that story that you're telling Ayumi. You two. Uh, stay here and try to figure out what's going on here. Right. Um, and all this also kind of dovetails with, um, or not kind of, but like uh, we get this parallel tract of murders from 18 years ago. That's right. So like 18 years ago, starting 18 years ago, there were three middle school girls mm-hmm. who were all strangled and then had like a paper bag with a smiley face o- over their head. And but they were strangled by like hands, like somebody had physically strangled them, right? Which is different from the like 
uh, Eske, who, or Aisuki, who he um, was strangled by something else, like a cord or rope or something like that. Right. Uh, and uh, the sort of uh, details about the paper bags had been kept from the public. Um, right. So, so the question is: Is this the copycat, or is this the serial killer work at work again? Right. Right. So all all of all of these questions are uh, in in play, um, sort of within the first like chapter or two. Yeah, and there's like other details, like the father of the first girl who was murdered. Like he was a prime suspect, but he died in he died in a house fire. Right. And then and there, there was, was another missing person. There was from like that a mysterious, yes. like a mis- a mysterious, like missing man who had, was never found when the police went to question him, but when they went to his apartment, it was covered in blood. Right. And even that, like, we're starting to get into, like, chapter three, chapter four territory. Stuff that, genuinely, I love that this game was like, one of these chapters, your character's going to go to the library. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at all, look at all uh, newspapers. Look at all these books. Uh, and he threatens to go back the next day. And you're like, <laughs> all right, two days in a row, Famicom Detective Club is taking me to the library, um, which is wild stuff. Um, but, so... Where the rubber kind of meets the road here is that you uh, quickly develop a relationship with the uh, detectives who are the, the police detectives who are investigating the uh, murder of, uh, we'll say SK, that's, that's uh, easier. Um, uh, so it's uh, Daisuke Kamihara and Junko Kuze. Yeah, and Junko Kuze is like the lead detective. Yes. Um, she's. I looked this up. She's 26 years old. Sure. <laughs> and um, she has, like, her own thing going on. Yes. Uh, to put it lightly. Yes. yes. Um, but she's kind of, like, the tough as nails, you know, like. By the book. By the book. I'm going to get the job done. But I have a soft, you know, like, out, out of my hard candy shell, I have a soft chocolate interior. Oh, boy. But you do not really have access to that interior kind of ever in the game. Yeah, until right? the very end. Until the very end. <laughs> kind of. Um, and, but then, yeah, uh, by comparison, her partner, yeah, Kamihara, yeah, Daisuke says, call me Dice. Uh huh. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is my, um, yep, uh, video game himbo boyfriend. I love him. I think he's bad, but I love him. <laughs> <laughs> There's like times <laughs> yeah. where he's, um, like, he, like, he's like teasing you and, um, he's mm-hmm. calling you like little one and stuff like that. He calls you boy detective. Boy detective. Um, which uh, is he very wants funny. you to like, if, like in order to get him to like give you information, you have to tell him how handsome he is yes. multiple times yes. in the game. Like, uh, and so look, does he canonically turn out to be straight and, um, <laughs> uh, yes. yes, but. And it, categorically not interested in you. Sure. <laughs> But it, it's still fun. It's, it's still, still fun. fun to pretend. Well, because, like, honestly, that is the character that uh, the uh, protagonist spends the most time flirting with in mm-hmm. this game. Um, Ayumi spends the most time flirting with her former fencing coach. But, you know, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, this, I, until we've introduced uh, that character, I'm, I know fencing coach isn't exactly right. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, so those are the two main detectives, uh, Kamihara and Kuze. Um, and then there is the... Um, police captain or what what is his title he's the inspector he's, he's the, the inspector. inspector yeah he's an older gentleman his name is uh Ka- kamiharu kamada mm-hmm. um and uh he doesn't like he's just sort of like a, a a weird stone wall in some ways that like he knows stuff about well i mean this is i guess where he's kind of important is that he was around to uh investigate the original crimes 18 years ago um but uh is still keeping you a non police officer at arm's length, even though he's also like, but well, you know, like help us out. <laughs> right. But will not give you any information. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Those are, uh, where do you want to go from there? Do we want to like kind of move into uh, your uh, experience, like looking into the, what's the name of the school? Do you remember? No, I don't remember uh, the name I, of it. I've, I've got my switch up here uh, and the in game journal handy. Um, because it has all of this inf- information. Yeah, I guess if you look at Fukuyama. Well, I was going to look at uh, SK. Um, uh, he's a student at uh, M- Minami Daisan Junior High. Okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. I didn't remember that, but uh, yes. So uh, a lot of, you know, since there are so few, like, physical clues uh, to investigate, you sp- your two characters, Ayumi and uh, Patrick or Ace, um, spend a lot of time investigating this middle school where uh, Escape uh, went, um, and it's there that you meet um, 
I guess the the so you you meet a lot of like nameless students there. There's like a pair of girls that uh, like one of them is talkative and the other one is shy. Uh huh. Um, and they're a delight. Um, there's like just some like random uh boy that that you meet there. Um, who's also like kind of a weirdo and a weirdo to Ayumi. I forgot that he's also kind of pretty right. towards her. Um. But uh, the like first real person that you meet there is uh, Fukuyama, um, who does have this history of uh, being in uh, it's it's a sword thing, right? It's like a fencing I think club so. with I, Ayumi, or like some sort of martial arts or, or something some kind like of that. yeah, maybe that's right. Um, and uh, he was so uh, he was with Ayumi in this uh, in this club at in her high school after he had graduated. Yeah, he's like five years older yeah. than uh, Ayumi, but he. It was her senpai. Yes. Which is to say, like, her sort of, like, role model in uh, this sport, be it with swords or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some or, martial arts. Like, um, yeah. But he's now a teacher at the, at the middle school where this, like, student who was murdered went. Right. So, you know, he doesn't have a ton of information about uh, SK, who, you know, was not in his, like, the grade level that he teaches homeroom for or whatever. Um, but he... Uh, during like your early conversations, it is clear that he knows more than he's letting on. Um, and in particular, uh, you, you like get a little information um, from the other kids that SK uh, and his friend uh, Kohai mm-hmm. uh, were interested in the same girl, uh, Magu- uh, Ma- Ma- Magumi Morimoto. And Magumi is in Fukuyama's class. Yes. And so she's like a little bit o- older than SK. Um, uh, and so, like, the, it's it's a, a a lot of the like early go of the game Actually, here. I think she's younger. SK's fifteen. Oh, is she, and oh, she's is she younger? 14. Okay, sorry, yeah. my my bad. Um, uh, so so much of like the early go of the game here is uh, just learning about these kids' lives, right? It is, yeah, and like trying to th- trying to learn more about S- SK, and then also like uh, Megumi when she's like she was missing from school the day that SK was like um discovered discovered his, his body was discovered yes right. and and nobody's everybody's like none of the students know why she was not there and fukuyama is kind of cagey about right. whether he knows whether or not right. why she w- wasn't there that day and like sort of the narrative that you kind of buy early and then gets questioned almost immediately is that like oh she's been missing school because she's so upset that her friend was discovered right. uh, dead um but you're like, oh no, she actually was not at school when everybody else learned that he was dead. Exactly. Um, so you're you're already a little bit like, okay, what is what does she know? And also, why isn't Fukuyama being straight with us about yeah, what's going on? I, I almost feel like the easiest way to talk about this is to follow the each of I these agree. paths. So maybe we just follow like the Fukuyama path. And I, I think so too. Talk about what his deal is, and then we'll circle back to uh, like Jun- Yunko or Junko. Yeah, uh, and th- this is uh, this was true of the previous um, Famicom Detective Club games, uh, and it is true of this one that there is a story that like you you and your character are experiencing in real time, but the like real juicy drama filled stuff is all in the past. Yeah. Right. Um. So uh, there's uh, the stuff around like uh, SK's death. Um, and what the steps that led to that. And then there's also, which we've uh, kind of only glancingly mentioned here, um, the murders from 18 years ago and the like origin of the smiling man. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but yes. And let's... like, you know, like, um, yeah, like Junko, she has uh, her yeah. own, she has like her own deal with like a brother that went missing and like all this kind of stuff. Right. So yeah, let's just follow like one yeah. half at a time. And I <laughs> yes. think that'll be the easiest way to. To right. talk about it. And then, like, when we get right up to the reveal, like, put a pin in it, go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you, uh, through, I, I guess it doesn't really matter, like, how these things are revealed, right? But, like, right. you, uh, you, you try to get, uh, to, uh, Megumi Morimoto's, um, like, house to, like, interview her, but, like, she's so distraught. You talk to her mother for a little bit, all this kind of stuff. Eventually, um, like, she's brought into the police station because it's like, okay, she knows something and like, we have to get this out of her. Um, and, uh, what Megumi, and again, remember she is, uh, like this crush that, uh, SK and probably Kohei both had. Um, uh, but what she reveals is that the reason that she wasn't at school, um, the morning that, um, uh, SK's body was discovered was that the night before she had confessed her love for her, 
homeroom teacher, Fukuyama. Right. So that's part of why, and you know, she's, what did you say, 14? Uh-huh. 15, something like that. Um, so part of what uh, Fukuyama's being a weirdo about is that, like, he didn't handle that great, right? Like, right. responsibly, in that he didn't, like, run away with her or whatever. Uh-huh. But, like, really did nothing to, uh, I think, like, protect the feelings of this child. Yeah, he, like, shuts it down. He shuts it down, uh, yes. But, in a, yeah, yeah. And so she was upset about that. But then we, what we also learn is that when she was leaving, mm-hmm. she ran into Eske. And he was, and they kind of had, like, a little bit of a fight. Right. Um, and, and SK had been, uh, like, uh, hoping to get into a more prestigious school, but, like, his grades were slipping, uh-huh. right? Like, that, yep. that's part of this, too. Um, uh, but, like, part of that reason is that he, or part of the reason that, like, he's distracted and his grades are slipping is that he was seeing his, like, crush uh, totally uh, ignore him in favor of you know, this 25-year-old man that's uh, teaching her homeroom or whatever. And when you're doing this part of the investigation... The like the assumption that uh, Megumi has and that uh, Kohei have like his his best friend um, was that they they are always like are like are you sure he, he was murdered kill, uh, yeah yes. or that because like we're worried that he killed oh trigger himself. warning suicide <laughs> yeah like we're worried that he killed yeah. himself um and uh I mean is, is we the, might as well. is the next step just revealing that, yeah like, we might as well so he did kill himself. Uh, that's, uh, that's why his, um, wounds do not match, uh, those of the people who were killed 18 years before. He was not strangled by hand. He strangled himself with his own necktie. Yeah. From his, like, school uniform. Right. Which, by the way, was not found on his body. Right. Um, because it was taken by, okay, so uh, now do we have to, like, back up? I think now we have to back up. Okay. And talk about (laughs) what the deal with, um, uh, Detective Kuze is. Detective Kuze, uh, again, this is the like by the book, uh, you know, hard nosed detective, um, not not the goofy fun one that you flirt with, uh-huh. but uh, the other. Uh, her brother has been missing for many years. Yeah, eighteen uh, years. Eighteen years. There we go. Um, and uh, so you spend some time investigating her childhood and her missing brother. Yeah, and when uh, she was, her and her brother were young. Their parents died in a car crash, and so they went to live in the countryside with their grandparents. Yes. And um, her and her brother were, like, really close. Super close, yes. And um, she had, like, uh, she would always wear this hairpin that her mother had given her Mm -hmm. um, before her mother died. It is not, except for the fact that it is a gift from her mother, a special hairpin. It's not, like, a valuable uh, trinket or anything like that. It is just, like, an off-the-rack. Yeah, something that that she would wear all the time. And then um, her and her one night on her birthday or his birthday, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's her birthday. Her because birthday. They, her and her brother have like a fight. Something right. happens that they they have a fight, and then well, um, and let's let's actually like drill down onto like the thing that happens because okay. like um, it's important to the iconography of the game. Um, is that uh, uh, she really likes these purple flowers, right? Um, the the eggplant flowers. I think. Or does My he... memory is that he, she was growing them. F- oh, oh, she okay. was growing. She was growing the, egg, eggplants. She was growing the eggplants because that was him. his favorite food. Yes, right. And, and so, and go ahead. one night he like picks. He, he she was doing it in secret, so he right. didn't know that her and her grandma had like planted these eggplants for him. Right. And then on her birthday, he comes home and he had picked the flowers, these beautiful purple flowers yes. from the eggplants, um, and that to give to her but that really upsets her because she had been growing them for him right uh so it's a real uh, gift of the mad guy uh, situation um but like the uh the sort of uh curved stem of the eggplant flower forms the like logo of emio the smiling man is a sort of like crescent shape mm-hmm. um that we will return to later in the conversation in ways that i think are incredible um but so like that 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 flower is very important. So they have this big fight, um, and uh, then he runs off. His, his name, by the way, is uh, Makoto uh, Kuze, um, and their grandmother's name is uh, Yoshi, um, and she's the one that you visit in like the, the old folks' home, and she gives you some of this um, I- information uh, along with like a photograph of uh makoto and right. uh, and kuze together when they were kids um which you will use to get a uh like 
a hypothetical drawing of him, uh, you know, 18 years later from the police station sketch artist. Yeah. All of which is important. It's it, like all of these tiny little details uh, just like creep into like a larger tapestry, which uh, I think these games are like uniquely situated to do uh, information doled out, you know, like over the course of seven, eight, nine hours. Um, it's just very cool. But OK, so they they have this fight. Makoto runs off. Uh huh. She runs after him. Yes. It's raining, right? Probably, probably. It's, a, it's, it's nighttime. It's a, it's a, it's a bad, it's a bad, uh, a bad time. And then she returns, mm-hmm. but he never does. Right. And nobody knows what happened to him, and she never says. She never says, but she sort of quietly committed her entire life to uh, finding out what happened. Yep. Now, concurrent to this, no, she. I mean, now we have to address the smiling man. Yeah, yeah, I think we do. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's it's because she we do find out what happens. She and her brother encounter the smiling man together. Um, right? I mean, yes, we do learn that that okay, that, okay. that is true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now, so now we just get back to the beginning of the the smiling man's uh, existence. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So the, the ultimate spoiler here, uh, and it's a name that you'll uh, encounter sort of early on, or not that early. It's like halfway through the game that you first hear the name uh, Minoru uh, Tsuzuki, um, who uh, is the uh, man who went missing around the time of the first, uh, you know, uh, murder with the, the first gr- yeah, yeah girl the, who was murdered. That the police were never able to question. And when they went to his apartment, it was covered in blood. Right. Uh, so this guy, <laughs> and this is, uh, I guess, the reason we're kind of like tap dancing around it and that like it still feels, this is the darkest part of the game. This is the part that is like the epilogue that plays after you've rolled credits and everything. Um, and uh, go ahead. Well, I guess, I guess before we get into like, like the, those specifics of like what happened in the past. And this everything. is a good point. Yeah. Like um, maybe all we need to know is that uh, he is uh, this like killer of, of these three girls at this point. Right? Yeah. And the way that this like manifests itself in the game is you have a police sketch of him. Yes. And then you have a police sketch of Makoto. Right. And both of these are like, you know, uh, imagined 18 years after their disappearance. Right. And so um, you are, you think that Makoto is live and you think you know where he is living. And so you visit Yeah, you visit this city, little town. Yeah. yeah. To, and are like showing the sketches to everybody you see. And um, somebody, uh, a construction worker is like, oh yeah, I worked with this person. I worked a job with this guy. His name is Minoru. And you're like, what? Because yeah. I, I think this is... And then you show him the picture that you have of Minoru, and he's like, no, it's Minoru is this guy, and points to the picture of Makoto. And you find a, like, a, a garage, like a, a car yes. repair shop yes. that this old couple, is, like, runs and manages. It's a real and, mom and pop situation. Yes, yeah. and you, you show... They're and in, they're like, their 60s. so sweet. They are so sweet. And yeah. so you show them the... Uh, sketches and they're like oh I that is this is like uh, I we do know that person right well they identify the one that you believe to be Minoru as Minoru yes and they're like he just kind of showed up you know 18 years 19 years ago whatever it was you know like 20 years ago and didn't say much uh, but was sweet and had like an interest in cars and they basically like adopted him him. and then one day he said he needed to leave, and they gift him, gifted him a car, and they hadn't heard from him since. And a pair of metal shears. And a pedal, <laughs> pair of metal shears. we got to mention the pair That's of metal right. shears. Yeah. we got to plant that here. And they are just so sweet, and they're like, we just want to know that he's okay. Right. If you can find out anything about him, that would make us so happy. So you are... Uh... While you're exploring, how how exactly do you get like tipped off to like head into the mountains to this like abandoned village? So you go back to the construction workers because you're confused now because you have two drawings right. of two different people, and you have the construction worker saying, uh, uh, the guy that 
you're saying this drawing is of Makoto. No. Which is, again, uh, uh, Detective Kuze's brother. And long the, lost the, brother. The construction workers are saying, no, this is Minoru. Yes. And then you have this old couple who are looking at the other drawing and like, I don't know who Makoto is, but this other person is Minoru. Yes. And then the construction worker, you go back to the construction worker and they're like, oh, yeah, like we dropped oh, yes. him off at this village way outside yeah. the city. And I got to say, they could be a little bit more descriptive to be like, this village, which is abandoned, <laughs> yeah. is basically a ghost town. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, they're not like super weird that he was living there. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, uh-huh. really. Uh-huh. <laughs> is one of the weirder things in the game. Yeah. So you uh, then go like out uh, looking for uh, this village because you want to figure out. I mean, first of all, you're like, I think I'm on the uh, on the heels of Makoto, maybe of Minoru. Who knows? Right. You get to the village and this part's all like kind of told out of order and we get like sort of like snippets of it um, from many different perspectives. But Detective Kuze is already there. She, and, she, and she tells you leave. Yeah, she's like, beat it. And like, you can tell she wants to murder. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, she is, she is, uh, w- she has worked all of these angles, which I guess we will get to what those are in a second, um, because Makoto is with Minoru. Her brother has been kidnapped, basically, for the last 20 years, uh, and has been living in this abandoned village with the smiling man. Um, and uh, Makoto experienced enough like trauma in the moment that he was taken um, that he like effectively loses his identity and sort of becomes like the ward of the Smiling Man. Yeah, he's basically been brainwashed because he yes. he doesn't know that his name is Makoto. He thinks his name is Minoru because like, Minoru thinks- tells him, "You are young me." Uh huh. Um, which uh, interesting parallels here to. Uh, the uh, main character of the series and Utsugi because Utsugi, mm-hmm. you also start the series as an amnesiac and then just become a detective because like this is the person that takes you in so like interesting like parallel tracks thing happening here uh, which is so cool but I don't think Detective Kuze knows that Minoru is there I think she knows that she her, knows her brother, brother is, there. is there right but I don't think she knows that this other person is there I think I could be wrong I think I- she does well if nothing else she knows that the smiling man is there she may not know No, she must know. Yes, she does. You're right. You're right. That makes sense that she would expect because he took her, or the smiling man took Makoto. It makes sense that she would expect him to be there, I guess, because that's the whole reason why she does what she does at the very beginning of the game. Before the events of the game. uh Should we zoom back to to (laughs) that now? (laughs) This really uh, is not going to make any sense unless you played it, but yeah, we might as well. So, okay, the uh, uh, SK, the uh, kid who, as we said before, killed himself by strangling himself with his school tie, um, uh, was not killed, obviously, by the smiling man. He killed himself. The bag winds up on his head because Detective Kuze puts it there. Yeah. Um, she had the bag from the night that her brother was taken. It fell off of uh, Minoru. Um, or I guess, like, uh, Makoto had attacked him, right? Right. Uh, and, like, the, the bag falls off that way. He, you know, protects his sister from uh, Minoru. From the Smiling Man. Um, and so what Kuze's move here is to uh, draw the Smiling Man out of retirement or out of hiding. Because he's been missing for 18 years, right? There's been no, no new crimes. Yep. Um, so she's like staging uh, SK's you know, uh, death scene as a murder scene. Um, to draw him out of hiding. And I think as, and an, find ex- her brother. as an excuse yeah. to like use police resources, you know, and totally. everything yes. to, um, to find her brother. Right. So she, uh, she packs the, uh, the tie away because it's the murder weapon or no, self murder, yeah, right? The suicide, uh-huh. uh, weapon. So the, the police technically and have, the suicide note that and the had suicide on, note. Yeah. That's right. Um, and keeps them at her apartment. Like she's hiding evidence. She's like doing some real crooked cop stuff. Yeah. And there's a, there's a part that we didn't talk about where like, um, the smiling man follows her or follows her to her apartment. Yes. And like puts a note into her door mm-hmm. um, that has her hair clip on it. Yes. And a name that she doesn't recognize. Emiko. Emiko. 
And um, and so she freaks out. She calls Kamehara, who you are with Kamehara when she calls. You go over there. And we'll talk about why you're with him as well, because that's such, it's such a fun sequence. But. but, like, you go over there, and when they go to kind of, like, case the neighborhood to see if he's around or anybody saw anything, you find in her apartment a tie and, like, a, a note. And it's not till later that, like, all these pieces come right. together. And the the game points out, which is helpful uh, to me, uh, again, as uh, someone who speaks no Japanese, um, the uh, similarity between the names uh, Emio, which is like a portmanteau of like Smiling Man, uh, and Emiko, which is this name that is alluded to uh, in the note from the Smiling Man to Detective Kuze. So now we go back to the abandoned village. Now we go back to the abandoned village. Um, and Detective Kuze is like, get out of here. And you're like, I'm going to stick around. <laughs> 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 what, are you going to leave at this point? I don't think so. Um, and th- so this is when uh, Minoru, like, shows up. Well, you do. Don't you leave and, like, but then you hear gunshots. And so That's you right. go back. That's right. And even then, she's not really telling you the truth. But you. Right. So you leave because she, you're forced to. In fact. There, it's the... Oh, yes. This is awesome. Yeah, there, it's kind of like meta because you're able to save the game, uh, your game, like your progress from the menu. And it says like save slash end investigation. Right. It's sort of like a save and quit. Uh-huh. Right. And I never thought twice about it until you're having this conversation in the village with uh, Kuze. Right. And like the only way to end it, like you, I, because the game trains you to choose all the different dialogue options. Right. And I actually think, you know, this is one where area that I think it really improves over the, the first two games and, like, the remake, is that it, I think it does a fair job of guiding you to what it wants you to do. I agree. Like, in the... And we'll eliminate stuff when it's no longer relevant. Exactly. But, like, you know, like, in the options, you have the option to think, which is kind of like a, a hint system in a way, but it's a hint system slash... You sometimes have to do it for right. progression. Yes, but you know it'll be like uh, in uh you know white text saying oh sh- um oh uh I wonder and then it changed to orange text what her expression means kind right. of prompting you to like go to her look face. and yes. then do investigate. So I think the game plays fair with you. It does ask you. You do end up like repeating like you ask a lot like that is an action mm-hmm. that you do all the time and sometimes people are stonewalling you. So you have to ask them multiple times, or you have to like think and then ask again, right? But it pl- seems or like... look at something and then ask again, or ask about something else and then go back to the original. But question it seems again, like but... it plays fair in like a yeah, I guess that's like what detectives do is just like grill people and keep asking until there's something very Columbo about the way this game plays in that like you learn information by just spending time with people, right? And you get like the most trivial bit of information, and that becomes like the cornerstone of your like working theory and the investigation, and then. You leads you to ask all these other people about stuff and that's like that's how like an offhanded uh you know um comment about uh sk having the hots for megumi leads you to be like oh all of this other stuff happened and probably sk killed himself right so like every the, there are so many tiny 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 things that you need to uh or that you know the game does for you uh like tease all these threads out until you get all the information and so there are times where you're like okay i know if i keep hitting these options eventually i will get to the right one right Um, and in this moment with detective kuze where she's like no walk away you have to choose the like save save and and investigation which you've never used it that way before but it is a kind of a clever inversion of what you've been doing up to that point so you say like an investigation and that turns into a dialogue option of you saying okay i will i'll head back and so you leave then you hear gunshots you run into like an abandoned house where it was happening and um kuze is standing covered in blood with uh a, like a man you've never seen before mm-hmm. lying on the ground with like a gash in his head and she says that she like uh macheted the macheted dude. the dude right uh, and makoto is standing right there the uh brain eld makoto who doesn't remember who he is but in reality what happened uh was that she like uh she is there to confront the smiling man and like free her brother from him um and uh like freezes up can't can't shoot like wants to kill him but cannot freezes up uh and makoto like arrives and has this like brief glimmer this like moment of recognition of this exact scenario from 18 years ago where the smiling man is going to 
kill his sister. Yeah, the only thing I'll that yeah. the only thing I'll add is that what we learn a, a little bit more is that while you were walking away, she does see Makoto. Yes, they talk. He doesn't really recognize her. You know, she's like right. prompting it. Um, and then he tell, and then she hears you. So this was like before you arrived, and she tells you him to like run to like hide. Oh and yes, then, and That's then right. like the, later the smiling man. At- like attacks her, starts to strangle her. That's when Makoto re- comes back into the room right. and hits him with a machete. I think I can't remember. Yeah, exactly Ma- Ma- remember Makoto events. definitely uh, yeah. takes. Yeah, it, and again, this is is all jumbled up. And as always, people are not telling you the thing they need to tell you. Like that's a cornerstone of the game. Yeah, the whole truth. Um, yeah, the yeah, exactly. That's the name of one of the chapters, right? Or it's just like the truth, can't so, something like that. Um, hold on, I, uh, now I want the look. truth. Yeah, the, the truth. Final yeah, chapter final chapter. Just the truth. Yep. Very, <laughs> very cool. Uh, but so, okay. Um, you know, what has happened here is that um, uh, Makoto is sort of like triggered by the same trauma that made him lose his memories, uh, quickly regains them uh, in uh, just enough time to save his sister from the, the smiling man. Yep. Um, and uh, then they like bring him back to like society and like reintegrate him back into society. And like, that's sort of like, the happy ending. Yeah, the happy there. ending is that she retires from the police force to spend her time, like, helping her brother kind right. of, like, reacclimate, And then her and... Uh, Kamihara. Yeah. Uh, get married. Our, our himbo boyfriend. Yes. Kamihara. Uh, they get married. Although it's it's very, like, subtly dropped that, like, her name is now uh, uh, Yunko yes. Kamihara. Yeah, and yeah. then there's, like, you know, like, a family photo that right. kind of, like, zooms out and they're all... Like together, and it is like, very- and I'm happy for them, but like, what about me? <laughs> well, we still have our crush on Ayumi. That's true, I guess. and that's only getting more awkward. So, <laughs> um, and that's uh, a confusing in our telling of it, but like the ending, like credits roll at yes, that point, right? And obviously, there's still a lot of questions. What's up with Minoru? Like, what's the deal with the smiling man? Yes. Why did those murders happen all those years ago? But I think that, like, um, the game goes on to answer those questions. But I I like the way that they structured it because it's like, yeah, this is, that is the end of, like, of the mystery of what happened to SK. Yes. Totally. Like, that, you know, that's all, like, answered and tied up because it's only tangentially related to the smiling man stuff at all. Like it's, it's because of Kuze's actions that the smiling man gets connected to it. Otherwise, Minoru would not have factored into the whole SK thing at all. Right. Exactly. That that's all circumstantial. Really. The mystery you're solving is like, why is this body like this? Right. Um, and, uh, you know, like understanding Kuze's motivations is different from understanding the mystery behind this mythical creature. That is the smiling man. Yeah. So credits roll, right? And then uh, it's like, hey, there's another like thing to play. Yeah, you you get a uh, the credits roll, and then you get a like a phone call from Utsugi. Yep, being like, hey, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. And when you're ready to talk about what I learned, yes, come and see me. Yeah. But it's your choice. Yep. And then uh, that ends. It kicks you back to like the title screen, uh, and you now have the option to choose between. Uh, Emio the Smiling Man, and uh, what appears to be like a separate game, right, with its own title screen, just called Minoru. Minoru. And whereas before the logo was, you know, like an eggplant flower yep. to the right, forming like the sort of half crescent. Uh huh. Now it's now the logo is like an eye, um, forming another like half, like half crescent. Well, so kind of. Uh, that yeah, yes, forming the other uh, half crescent, and when you finish it, it mashes the two logos together and it's one smiling face yeah uh which is awesome yeah uh but so yes then you you can engage this new chapter the epilogue this minaru um and uh it is basically utsugi like sitting you down and being like here's what i discovered when i went to investigate the uh you know origins of uh uh minaru and, and and the smiling man and then you sort of play as him this is the like least interactive part of the game uh and in some parts becomes like a 15 minute long like anime sequence. yeah there's yeah. like some like yeah in the beginning you do a, as yutsugi you do a little bit of talking to so slight like yes. villagers and stuff and so you kind of get a little bit of information and then yeah it just turns into a 15 20 minute anime episode right that lays out all like 
Minoru's life, what happened to Minoru, right? What ha- uh about the murders from eighteen years ago, like all that kind of stuff, right? And this is as grisly as this gets. So like, here's like the second trigger warning for like self mutilation and uh, child abuse, child abuse, yeah, all this kind of stuff. Um, so like the story of Minoru is that he also had a sister. Emiko, this is where that character name comes up. You know, again, just like if you had these questions where you're like, that wasn't really resolved in the main thrust of the story. It's like, yeah, that's not what that mystery was about. That's what this mystery is about. Um, so uh, Minoru and Emiko um, are uh, in a horrible uh, like home life uh, scenario. Their father is uh, an alcoholic who abuses them, uh, beats them, um, and... Uh, as a result, uh, Emiko is uh, always sad, <laughs> yep. as you might expect. Um, and Minoru, uh, like, he's, like, got to be on the spectrum somewhere or something, right? Like, He definitely yeah. seems that way, yes. He's very quiet. Uh, he, like, will talk when he's interested in something, but is usually, like, uh, not even soft-spoken, but just, like, does not talk, right? Um, uh, but he loves his sister more than anything, so, like you know, one day after they had been beaten by their father, uh, he puts on uh, like a, a silly, uh, put a smile on a paper bag and like dances around for her. And it cheers her up and it cheers her up. Um, what's the next step here? And so, uh, you know, and his whole thing is like when his father is like beating Emiko, he's like, don't you, you're making Emiko cry. Like, you're yes. Making, and so, um, they plan to run away or his sister does or something like that but she is found uh or did her father i think her father killed her killed her yeah and she like like i think in just one of his drunken like beating uh you know like just a normal abuse session for him uh like ends up killing her right very possibly i couldn't remember if she like if he drowned her if she like drowned oh maybe that's it yeah like because they're like by this pond but anyways that breaks minaru Yes. Like, um, uh, and he is just completely distraught Mm -hmm. and he, uh, kills their dad with and burns down the house. Yeah. Um, or with the machete, right? Or is it with a baseball bat? I feel like the machete is like a, uh, a recurring image, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I can't remember. I, I'm not sure. Sure. Um, so, and then. Because he doesn't burn, he burns down the house of his first like. Yeah, victim. you're you're right, and so he, but he kills his dad somehow. Like, sure, I think it's with the baseball bat or something. That's right. You're you're right. I'm 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 uh, I'm uh, conflating some things here. And then he goes to. So right, the, his sister isn't dead in this moment, right? She dies later. I don't think so. I think she's dead. I think okay, okay. she finds him. He <laughs> finds like he finds her dead. Yeah. He is really distraught. He goes and kills his father. Right. Um, and at that point, I can't, I. Uh, so he, he goes, he goes, he's like taken away to like juvenile hall. Right. right. And uh, is soft spoken and, you know, like nice there, even though he is like a killer. Right. And then when he's released, he doesn't have a family to go back to. And this is the like condition that he finds himself in when he meets the uh, family running the um, mechanic shop, whose name is... Todoroki? Yeah, Todoroki. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Todoroki. And so, like, he's taken in by them and, like, learns this, uh, the skill. Actually, he, he learns it in, uh, like, the, the boarding school that he's at, right? I think so, yeah. How to, like, fix cars and stuff. Um, so, like, he, you know, starts making money. He's eventually gifted this car and the pair of metal shears. <laughs> uh-huh, and um, the pair of metal shears. And he has, like... Um, a crush or like some sort of relationship with uh, yes, that like right. first victim. Right, and they seem to be they seem to be friends. Um, but she and this the, is the first victim of uh, the of smiling from, man from, from from eighteen years ago. Yeah. yeah, and so but um, you know they're like talking, and she sees that or he sees that uh, like she has a bruise from her father right beating her, and so he he goes he puts on. A paper bag, right? The smiling, you know, and he cheers her up, and he's like, you know what, we're gonna, we're, like, I'm, I'm gonna take care of this. I'm right. like, I'm gonna take care of this, and so he, this is when he goes back to the uh, Todorokis, and he's like, I'm going to leave. They give him a car, right? The girl comes home to Minoru, 
killing her father. And this is the machete, right? I can't remember how he does it, but I think it's right. the machete because he's like, this time I'm not making the same mistake that I did last time. Right, right, right. right. So, and so he, he kills her, uh, her dad and, you know, he expects her to be grateful and he's like, Are, you don't have to be sad anymore, right? Like, right. Um, and he's like, I can't remember if he's calling her like Emiko. He is calling her Emiko. Because, yeah. well, and this is also what he told the uh, Todorokis is that he had to go find his, he had to go help his sister. Right. Someone who we have now established and we remember is, has been dead for a yeah. while. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Anyways, she obviously freaks out. He's wearing the paper bag with like the smiley face. Um, she, he's like, why are you crying? I don't. You know, like, I don't get This you is the be... funny thing that should cheer you up uh -huh. is me wearing this bag on my head and I killed your abusive father. Shouldn't you be happy now? And and he, and right, and he's not even thinking, like, I killed your abusive father because he's he's still in his state of, right. like, your Emiko. And so your abusive father is my, my abusive, abusive father. father. I right. just killed him. I'm doing it right this time. Right. You're still alive. Right. And then she freaks out, the fr and so he ends up strangling her. Right, and then she has a, a slightly different bag on her head for some reason, right? I don't really, I, that was one piece of it that I didn't, wasn't totally tracking, but like they make a point as you are investigating the murders from 18 years ago that the first bag is different. Oh yeah, I can't remember, I can't remember but the But the second and third bag and SK's bag are all the same. And so uh, Minoru kills her, burns, lights, burns the house down. Right, and then like goes back to his own apartment uh, and this is a, this is like a, a true like bit of mania, right? Where um, he's like, I can't believe I keep failing at making these people happy, right? Like I can't, I can't get them to smile through. Like and really, it's like a Miko because he yes. thinks that she was a Miko. Uh, That's right, or Emiko, however you say. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this is where he's like, well, okay, the bag's not doing it. I need to cut a permanent smile onto my face. Gets out those metal shears and just like goes to town chopping up his face Joker style. Yeah. Um, and this is why there is a room bathed in blood and a missing man. This is Minoru cutting his face into the like grotesquerie of the smiling man, even under that bag. And so he, um, you know, like has this thing and it becomes part of the legend where he sees little like young girls who are crying who are like Amiko's age. Yep. And he goes up to them. And if they, continue to cry they see the paper bag and if they cry then he kills them right and it, gives them the permanent smile which is putting the bag on their head but if one of them if they laugh then he, he leaves them alive right so obviously he kills these two uh girls that are largely like footnotes in the story of just like they fit the same pattern right um and then there's a uh fourth girl that he encounters who now you later on in the story meet as she is the uh, owner and proprietor of a bar that uh, Kamihara likes to go to and that he meets you at uh, half halfway through the game. This was during the sequence where you have to like type the name yeah. uh, and get like the, the kind of joke fail state. Um, but uh, so th when this, this person, when she was a little, she was a runaway, uh, had had like a hard life. And so when she's encountered by uh, the smiling man, she just sees this guy and is like, I thought, what's this idiot pervert up to? And was laughing at him. And so Minoru was like, okay, no, nothing for me to kill here. And walks away, spares her life. And then uh, the way that she intersects, or he intersects with uh, Kuze and Makoto. Yep. Um, is the night that of Kuze's, of Detective Kuze's like birthday when she was young. Yep. And uh, her and Makoto like had their fight. She had run out. And so she was crying at the side of the road. And Minoru approached her mm -hmm. and um she kept crying and so he went to strangle her and then makoto shows up and he like tackles him and is like beating minoru up but minoru gets the best of him like beats him up throws him in the trunk of his car right and leaves well and uh, so and it's in this moment that minoru is like M uh, you are not makoto you are a younger me because he recognizes the same experience right that like uh makoto trying to protect um, Detective Kuze from the Smiling Man is the same as uh, uh, Minoru protecting his sister from their ab abusive father, right? Like there, it's all these like cycles of abuse and like mirror images of people, um, and he's like inflicting inflicting that mirror image on Makoto. He's like, "You are now young me," 
and I'm going to like I'm going to get us away from here. And like he does impose like some kind of like normalcy ish on their lives, right? Like he doesn't keep up the he's not out murdering people after this. No, but he's still looking for he's Amico. still looking for yes, that's right. Like they do go out. Um, right. Yeah. But but you're right. Like he feeds him and all this kind of stuff. But it is this very like obviously gross terrible relationship yes where he's brainwashed makoto into thinking that he's somebody else uh thinking that he's him Him, right yes um but makoto's like going into town and working you know when he's older like all that kind of stuff um and giving his name as minoru uh which is uh terrifying stuff um and they're both uh like uh, out in the world wearing like surgical masks um uh uh minoru to hide his uh disfiguring scars um and uh Makoto, um, because Minoru told him to do that, because in his mind, they're the same person. And then I think, like, what triggers Minoru is he sees, just like uh, uh, Detective Kuze wanted, Mm -hmm. he sees on TV that that paper bag with the, like, the smiling face is back. Right. And so um, they know that it's Detective Kuze, and and so he sends Makoto to Detective Kuze's house to put like the hair clip right which he still has from the night that he encountered her with like the name Amiko on it yep um and p- give that note to her and so the the smiling man who came to her apartment was not actually Minoru it was, it was Makoto, Makoto right. wearing the paper bag who although at that point is believing himself to be young Minoru you know what i mean like and not knowing who detective Kuze is like what their relationship right, is right 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 yeah. um so uh I think that's it. I think we've now yeah, and like, then basically we just uh, catch up to the they're present. living their life right in this abandoned village until when, Detective Kuze shows up. Yep, uh, and uh, uh, Makoto kills Minoru. Right, and like Minoru uh, sees her and is like Amiko, Amiko, and yes. then she's screaming, she's crying, and he's like, "You're not Amiko. I'm gonna kill you." He goes to strangle because her because you should really should not be crying. <laughs> yeah, and then I really don't like that. And then uh, Makoto runs in, kills him with the machete. And there we go. Yeah. So that, go ahead. Well, the the end there is like, you know, you watch the Minoru part and it is mostly just watching. It's just this 15, 20 minute like anime episode where all of this is unfolding in fairly graphic detail. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, I'm soaking this up. Like I, it's, it's, I, I I don't like consider myself uh, someone who like revels in like really dark stuff or, uh, you know, scary things or whatever. Um, But like, because this story has like worked up to this point and also been like, okay, are you ready for this? Um, it all really worked for me. I completely agree. I thought it was like beautifully rendered yep. and does such a, I thought such a nice job of really like completing the story yes. and making you understand, you know, like uh, everything that happened that brought us to the point yeah. of, uh, you know, like SK killing himself and, how the yeah the whole thing like you talked about like the themes of this game just hinged on people their inability because you know like um uh, detective Kuze has an idea of what happened to her brother right but has but never she can't like, share the information yeah has just like repressed it and it not shared the information and it's like everybody in the story whether they are the they're you like or mm-hmm. um they're Minoru. None of you. Some of it is in a lighthearted way. Like, you can't really express to Ayumi how you feel about her. Right. And some of it is this really dark way. But basically, every character in the game is w- withholds information, is not telling the truth, is not expressing how they really feel. Right. And it all has, like, led to this horrible situation. And sometimes those, that horrible situation is, like, murder, right? And sometimes the horrible situation is suicide, right? And, like, there are just all these things of, like, the individual character's, like, personal struggles become these like catastrophic moments in in their lives um and the places where people are like liberated from that are where they are talking about it right um so uh what what, what is the the name of the the woman who owns the uh the the bar that uh Kamihara likes so much um we know her as Mama Shoko yeah that's right um so she's the one who survived the like encounter with uh the the smiling man um and you know by laughing at him and then freely tells you this story you don't really have to do anything to like trick her into telling the story um and in fact like Kamihara seemed to know the story already and like brought you there to hear it and you almost just have to be 
honest. Like that's what she wants out yes. of like the because she says like she doesn't like cops generally. She right. doesn't you know like right. um. But Kamihara is Kamihara is maybe the one character who he does withhold information. Uh, but in a more like playful way, like he kind of is the one open book character. Totally. And yeah. so it makes sense that, you know, she, he's like the exception at, uh, mama Shoko's bar, right? Like the one cop that she lets that, that be she'll there. Let her. And but even, even still, like she needs to tell you stuff because yes. you're not a cop. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, there, there's so many like interesting moments like that where, and then like when you're visiting their, uh, uh, the, the Kuze's grandmother, uh, Yoshi, um, that like all you're doing is like having a conversation with her and she brings like out a photo album and like you learn bits and pieces about their lives, which, you know, are again, like threads that you pull on and like learn more about the the whole story. But for the most part, like she, you're, she's just like healing from talking to you. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, the, uh, I think a lot about the relationship between the Todorokis and um, Minoru and that there was like, this period there where like he was almost saved right like the love that they extended to him uh like almost spared him from like and did for a time like curb his violent impulses Mm -hmm. he was being like productive uh and then like just because he was uh triggered by the same like cycle of like violence and trauma that he had had experienced early in life he's like set back on that path and he's almost uh yeah, I, it's, what I was going to say, and I don't know that it's entirely true, so check me on this, yeah, but sure. I feel, but I do feel like he's like, uh, he's the one character who like, whether Min- it's Minoru or Minoru, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Like Minoru is the one character, whether it's like, because he's like on the spectrum or something like that, like he can't really express himself. Yeah. And so, you know, like the that family that takes him in the Todorokis, the to- they're like so loving mm-hmm. and it's such a shame that like he can't yeah. I- express himself yeah. because you think, cause like if he could maybe they, they seem like a couple that could have helped him, but instead he's right. not able to really like express what happened to him. And so right. he's just, con- the cycle continues. Well, and the thing is, you see that, like, echoed in the teenage characters, too, right? That, like, that's uh, part of the issue with, like, Megumi is that, like, you got to draw her out. She, it's not until you bring her to the police station that you find out that she has a crush on her, her homeroom teacher, right? Which is, like, a trivial thing and, like, a high school thing. But, like, this is a catastrophic moment for her and for her friend who killed it himself. Um, and it's just, like... It's it's reflections of like you know whatever developmental thing is happening with uh, Minoru is also just like reflected in everyone else from uh, you know either being a, a child or having feelings they can't express um, that like they're all different flavors of the same inability to like communicate and therefore like find acceptance and healing through that communication. And there's even exa- like really small like almost like humorous examples like when you're talking to uh, SK's best friend that kohei kid yeah um if you like everybody thinks he and uh sk had like a crush on megumi and were like um competitive about that right but if you talk when you talk to him you learn that he actually didn't have a crush on megumi he has a crush on like the quiet girl Right. From, uh, with the braids. The from shy girl, the, yeah. Yeah, the shy girl from the li- that uh, he, like, sees in the library. But And so that's, like, a, a kind of, like, insignificant example in the whole thing compared to, like, the tragic outcomes. But that right. is, like, another area of people just, like, not expressing themselves and then, you know, misinterpretation. Right. And um, bad things coming out of that. Which, again, I think feeds into the, or is, like, uh, the, those kinds of ideas uh, are sort of reinforced by the way that the last chapter in the story is presented as like a separate piece of this, where it's like, um, this is this is the last piece that we need to communicate to you to like fully understand. Um, you know, we were like skating on the sort of like dark, but you know, not as uh, dark as like we're gonna get, um, because that's like the easier part to process, right? Uh, and that like getting to like the actual trauma and the thing that like breaks the brains of you know multiple men as they are experiencing these cycles of trauma, um, that like that's the stuff you got to really get to to understand what's really going on. 
Um, and, uh, you know, we, when Emia was, uh, announced and like revealed as a Famicom detective club game, um, uh, Yoshio Sakamoto was, um, like the, the very first video I saw about this, uh, game was him saying, um, that like, you know, the series is back and he like was a scenario writer on this, uh, and that the ending, he expects people to have strong reactions to the ending and he hopes you like it. But if you don't like, I get it, you know, like he's very much like, I, I took a swing with this. Um, and like, I, I think he really says something interesting with this story. Uh, and I think he knew it. And I, I, I wonder like how much, um, that's like that was his pitch with this game of like, I have a thing to say about like how communication is uh, important and difficult and we ignore it at our, at our peril. Um, and uh, the vehicle that I have to do that is Famicom detective club, a game whose gameplay loop is having conversations. Right. Um, and they were like, yep, great. Worth it. <laughs> worth bringing the series back for that. Um, Cause it just feels like such a sophisticated narrative idea. And we've talked before about how um, I think in our uh, uh, ABCs of the NES, when we were talking about um, Sakamoto's goal as a um, uh, game maker uh, was as sort of a compliment to Miyamoto, that Miyamoto was always going to be like a gameplay first, uh, like gameplay experience first uh, developer. And Sakamoto knew that he couldn't compete with that because Miyamoto is a genius and a one of one talent, um, and that he his job was to make games that Miyamoto would wouldn't it wouldn't even occur to him to make right um, and like this is not a Miyamoto style game. There's no like running or jumping. You don't have fun necessarily, right? Um, but Sakamoto is like, yeah, but watch me say something. Yeah, uh, and this feels like one of the most like un. Miyamoto games in that sense. It's just like that little quote that we uh, uh, uncovered during the uh, ABCs of the NES feels so relevant here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I uh, don't really know what else to say about this game except I really liked it. No, I really and you know when you finish it, like like we said, the logo kind of completes itself and the title screen now becomes Mio you know, uh, bar Minoru, the smiling man, and it's the complete logo. And it's like, yeah, you needed both parts right. of that to tell like the full smiling man story. I don't know. I was really moved by it. I, uh, yeah, me too. I thought it was really good. And I really, I, um, I don't bring this up in like, a um, like mean or like sarcastic type of way, but it really makes me more curious about other M. Because I, okay, yeah. I kind of feel like that was like an attempt. I, I don't know. You, no, you, you're not wrong. Because there, there's like similar themes of like trauma and like how uh, that like messes with your brain. Um, and also like tying it to issues with like uh, either uh, fatherhood or motherhood, you know, in, in the like right. respective games. Um, yeah. And just kind of like what happened there. Like, yes, what, exactly. Yeah. Like what happened? Because it's such a swing and so different from like any other Metroid game. Yeah. Um, and it's obvious, I, I think it's very clear that Sakamoto is like a very thoughtful, good writer. Yeah. And so it does make you uh, wonder what happened there with Other M. Because it, it didn't come together, obviously, in the way right. that I would oh, man. guess that he was hoping. It's really interesting then to like also consider like that there are gameplay moments in Other M that are like kind of pixel hunty and very like adventure gamey in a way that Famicom Detective Club like can be at its worst. Um and that Emio largely uh, avoids, right? Yeah. Um but like that that was still him like working through some of his worst impulses uh from the earlier games. Uh and then it was just like, no, 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 if I'm going to explore a concept that like deep and rich, that it needs to be in a game that is just narrative focus, um, which is what MEO is. And I think it's really interesting that the, that Minoru chapter, there is a little bit of the detective club, you know, like asking and that kind of yeah. thing, but it's more just like token doing that yeah. to set up. Here's like the story. You are just watching it. Right. There's no interactive elements. Like you just sit back and you uh just let it wash over you right and it's really well rendered you know like it's like uh beautifully animated like all that kind of stuff and like fully animated in uh -huh. a way that like the game you know there are like moments of it here and there but like generally the game is like got this very specific kind of presentation which is good and compelling and all that but like 
this full animated like the the production value of that the final 20 minutes of the game alone that's got to be like half the budget right is you just would animating think so, that thing yeah and but it's just it's just so interesting to me that that's the way that it was chosen for it to be told uh, yeah i agree where it's just like and i think maybe it's i i don't know i i really i really liked it so there there is something very uh i, I want to stay on this for just a second cuz like there is the uh like you say, the interaction or it, uh, the interactive elements of it are kind of stripped away for the end there. Um, and then like the game ends with uh, like Utsugi in the present being like, what, I mean, do you think this could have been prevented um, if like people had paid more attention or like had helped each other out when, when they needed it? Um, and I think the fact that the end of the game like takes those interactive moments away from you is a little bit of like, you can't change the past. Um, which is sort of just like the only thing you can affect to you can hope to affect is the present, um, and uh, like that you have no power in the past. Yeah. Um, which is a, again another like trauma related thing where I don't, I don't I don't I honestly I I, I feel almost ill equipped to discuss like how sophisticated this storytelling is. Yeah, it it really blew me away, especially you know like I enjoyed the first two games, but yeah. This the storytelling in this was much more than I expected it to be. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. Any other final thoughts before we uh, say goodbye to Emio the Smiling Man? The only thing I think we should do is uh, we should talk about some of the memorable conversations that okay. you have. Some of our like favorites. Yeah. The, sure. Or notable ones because there's one where you are talking to Fukuyama, who's like the teacher who also has a crush on Ayumi. Yep. And so you're having like a conversation with him waiting for um uh, Kohei to show up so you can talk to Kohei. Yes. And uh you have like a uh this moment of uh uh you, like you want to show off how close you are with Ayumi. Oh yes, yes. Uh and cuz like Fukuyama's talking about like, "Oh, we were such good friends," you know, like Right. And then you're uh, like, "Oh, I don't know. I was in a detective club with her, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I don't know, solved her best friend's murder, I don't know." <laughs> but like the way the way that like the gameplay b- leads into it yes. is like, you know, you're doing like um, you know, the talking and all of that and then it's like, "Oh, I think I can really show him." Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, it's very know, funny. You, like you like I think you do the show action yep. and the option is like show nested with uh, breadcrumbing too, like how much I know, you yeah, know, like Ayumi, I, I, yeah. Ayumi or something yeah, like it's, that. It, it's it's very funny. Well, and and uh, you know, I, maybe we made reference to this already. Maybe we haven't. But there is a a scene in uh, chapter two where you are uh, out at a bus station uh, near where uh, SK was murdered, um, and uh, it's like the bus isn't coming, and your cell phone is dead. Um, which you get, you have a cell phone in this game. It barely comes into play. Um, cause it's usually dead. Um, and you spend, uh, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes with nothing to investigate and no one to talk to. And it's just the character. And you're like trying everything you can to like progress the story. Um, and it's just like, nope, you're just like bored and like, can't move on yeah it's a very strange and like interesting moment and like trying to like tease out what that means like about your character or again like uh about the importance of like connection and like uh because you know once uh, uh a cab is called for you by uh detective kuze um which like is her affecting something in the present like helping you out in real time um but like yeah it's just funny that like you have no recourse in that moment i don't uh yeah, I wonder if it is a gameplay like tutorial type moment. That's interesting. Where yeah. it's where it's like, hey, there's going to be times where you just gotta pound on this menu yeah. until the game eventually advances. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. This is it's just the that way it works. You're yeah. just gonna hit the ask button and the look button a bunch of times sometimes. Yeah. And eventually the story will move along. Like yeah. you're you're not missing anything. It, that's just sometimes what happens in right. the, these things. Um, uh, the, the other thing, uh, that I, I mean, we already sort of, uh, touched on, uh, the conversation with Mama Shoto and her, uh, like whole thing about like, the cops aren't useful. I hate them. They're pigs. Uh-huh. Um, like that, that was all very like interesting and, and cool and like a fun perspective to see, uh, in uh, a game like this from not a villain, right? Yeah. Um, someone, someone who helps you out. Um, but then as you are uh, investigating like that village, um, there are, there's a set of three teenagers 
who are uh, dressed as they, they're wearing smiling man bags on their heads and like playing around. Um, and the sort of uh, that like, you get like intimidated by them and you're like, I hope those kids don't come over here. But like, I got to ask them questions. Um, I, I thought all that was like really like fun and interesting and uh, compelling. Yeah. I uh, we also made a glancing reference to it, but there are multiple times where Ayumi and uh, Fukuyama go to this like milk tea shop. Yes, and uh, and he loves the tiramisu, but knows it's too expensive, so he'll he'll only buy it on payday. Yeah, that's right, because he's just a, he's on a teacher's salary. He's on a teacher's salary, but all like all the interactions with Fukuyama are so when you're a, when you're playing as Ayumi are so awkward because yes. he's so smitten with you right that he's so awkward around you um yeah and it's just like uh, always like viewing him through the lens of like that botched interaction with megumi right where like she confesses her love for him um and it's just like he had he didn't have he didn't know that was coming and like just had no read on like how to deal with her after um it's just like Dude, you should stop talking to Ayumi. Like you don't know, how know. To, you don't know how to talk to women or even like someone who wants something or doesn't want something from you. Um yeah. I I felt like there was definitely like a knife's edge moment where and that I think the game is purposefully doing where you're like, "Okay, what is Fukuyama's deal?" because yes. he's like he's acting really weird and then you find out that it is oh like she has a crush on him. And there's a moment where you're like, is this going Persona 4? Like, is he right. going to be a pervert? Like, is he a creep? Right. Um, or Persona 5 or Persona <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 5. That's yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah, Persona yeah. 5. Um, uh, yeah, the <laughs> first dungeon of Persona 5 yeah. is uh, dealing with a teacher who's into students. But 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 he's not. Right. Um, but the game definitely, like, flirt, lets you wonder yes. for a little bit uh, right. exactly what his deal is. Uh, any other, um, conversations, uh, c come to mind for you? Uh, when you're, like, in the car with Kam Kamahara. Oh, yes. And... Is this when you express your suspicions about Kuze being weird or, like, uh, up to something? Oh. And he, like, stonewalls you at oh, the end yeah. of Oh, yeah. There's that one. Uh, there's the, like, first time that he gives you a ride. When you threaten to go to the library the second time, yes. you walk outside to go to the library. Yeah. You're leaving the detective office. Hilariously, And yeah. he, like, picks you up and is giving you a ride. Um, and that's where, like, in order to, you're trying to figure out more information about uh, Detective Kuze, and like, um, uh, and so you're trying to tease information out from it. He's like, "I'm not gonna tell you," uh, and then he forces you to call him handsome. Yep. And then he's like, "Okay, all right, all right I'll, I'll talk give to you a little bit of it." Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's also a fun conversation with the Inspector Kamada, uh, where he is. Uh, what what's wrong with him? He has like some. Did he hurt he like his back? He, yeah, something. he has like a herniated disc or something. Yeah. But he's again like stonewalling you. He won't share that information. Yeah, and so it you know the game kind of flirts with. Well, does he know more than he's letting on? Why is he right? Like, why does he look so uncomfortable? Right, and it's not it's not as though you have the ability to like change anything about his circumstance. Exactly, but like uh you know yeah I I, I don't know it, again all feeds into the like people are struggling with things that you can't actually get to the bottom of oh and they're hiding it for some reason yeah like another just like kind of um uh like there's no reason he shouldn't tell you but he doesn't he just um yeah but like he withholds I'm, it like put yourself in his situation for a little bit like you have this like injury and here's like a young upstart detective who's like bugging you for stuff and you're like i can't tell you this stuff anyway and then he's like what's wrong with you huh you look like real sweaty and like you're in a lot of pain you'd be like kid leave me alone <laughs> no i think that's totally true but um it, it just goes to like those like um, simple misunderstandings. Yes, yes. That you know, in this case, it worked out that oh, he just had a herniated disc. But could your suspicions have been tripped if he didn't eventually get right. that information? Right. Um, also, he reminds me, and I think this is purposeful. Uh, reminds me so much of the doctor in the missing air yes. that you keep going back to I like i so think he, he looks really similar is the doctor's name also kamada it's not but it's i think it's something it's so close, close right yeah I, so i think like they are they are playing with that yeah character types uh, -huh. uh and you know maybe pointless to point out an hour and a half into this episode but like you can totally play this game without having played the uh previous two oh, games in totally, the series. like yeah. the continuity does does not really matter here yeah uh the game is wholly self-contained and Wonderful. Mark, uh, I think that's probably it, right? 
I've yeah, I think so. We've exhausted our ask button, our think button, <laughs> uh-huh. our look button, and now it is time to save and quit investigation. <laughs> uh, all right, Mark, let's close this out. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Um, I've, I, I'll be thinking about this game for a long time, so uh, if anyone wants to send us emails, you know how to do that. Um, and we, I, honestly, I don't know where we would talk about like this spoilery stuff uh, in here again, um, but feel free to email and us. And also, get in the Discord. Get in the Discord. We don't have a, a channel for uh, MEO yet, but maybe we should have one. Yeah, if enough people, people want to talk about it. Because, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I would love to talk to everybody about this game yeah um thank you so much to our 16-bit patrons Connor mckay patrice Millett, kyle seaborn we appreciate you and we appreciate everyone who's listening to the show um join the discord as uh mark mentioned before email us we'll send you an invitation anthony deluca made our logo our theme music is provided by ape betty you can get more of his music by going to ape or by listening right now for my co-host mark mitchell this is patrick ellers saying thank you for listening Thank you.